Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charters here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis and guys we was talking yesterday about the that the market is chopping and which direction will it be going. We looked on a daily chart yesterday, I had a doji gap up and a doji interesting but then we got some confirmation today for in favor of the bears when it broke down when it broke down a support level here around 453.5 to 454 zone i think i gave you guys that trade setup yesterday i mentioned the short below this level and spy was able to go as low as 451.44 not a big move compared to tesla and nvda but take a look at the context we have an evening star pattern a big body green candle followed by a gap up with a doji followed by a red candle all right we got our evening star pattern on spy triple q evening star pattern iwm evening star pattern look at tesla i can't wait to talk to you guys about tesla but let's stick with spy real quick evening star pattern is usually a reversal pattern as many of you guys already know and it's a bearish reversal pattern but what does uncle charters always talk about on this channel confirmation from the price action okay we look to short below uh when we break down on support good worked out today okay i've said many times gotta wait for that setup don't try to call the top wait for the right setup rallies usually end when a critical support level fail it usually end with the false breakout setup all right, not every false breakout setup lead to the, a reversal of the trend or the, or, or the end of a rally, but every rally ended with a false breakout setup, one of the greatest trade setups of all time. You guys can see here, we cleared my 1.786 Fib level right there. On Tuesday, you see the green line, broke it back down. We have ourselves a false breakout setup as well as an evening star pattern. Follow through and confirmation for tomorrow would be a breakdown of my 1.618 Fib level. We got to keep taking the stairways down. That means breaking down more support level. So I mentioned yesterday, look to short if support fail, 453.5 and 454 was that level. Broke down. Now it's resistant. As long as below, 451.7 is the next critical support level based on the Fib level. And if that fails, guess what? We're going to look to short all right now keep in mind we've been rallying we've been rallying so if we break down any of these support levels that we break down that is a false breakout setup based on the daily chart let's not argue with the price action now this is why uncle Chata said we got to trade unbiasedly okay bulls have been feeling good bulls have been winning but today they might have gotten stung and if we break down support tomorrow the bulls might hurt some more Okay, overall, like I said, we broke out this ascending triangle. We could pull back down to 444 to retest that breakout level as a support. That is healthy. It's not necessarily uh, bearish in the bigger picture. But if there, are, if there are bearish setups on the smaller picture, why not play it unbiasedly and let's make some money. It's all about our P&L, guys. It's all about our P&L. So tomorrow, like I said, 451.7. I have support another FIB level at 450. If they if those fail, 448.5 is in play with 447 below. Below 447 will likely go and uh, retest, back test that breakout level of the ascending triangle around 444. Below 447. All right. And keep in mind, if that fails, that will be a false breakout setup of a you know of a larger pa uh, pattern. And there is a gap fill at 442.3-ish. All right? Tomorrow's bearish case scenario continues when we break down that 451.7 and the 450 level. If that happens, look to short. Now, to cancel my bearish sentiment, 453.5 uh, to 454 zone must recapture. That's all bulls need to do. Bulls recapture that level. We are likely heading back up to test 456.6 and maybe a new 52 week high at 458 and 460. All right? But that's only if 
We recapture 454. If we recapture 454, don't argue with the price action. But price action, there was an evening star pattern on the daily chart. That don't work, guys. It don't work like that. Just don't argue with the price action. Price action is the shepherd. Don't argue with it. We're sheeps. We're just followers. We're dumb followers. All right? Above 454, look to long. Below 451.7, look to short. You guys heard me? Let's try to get this money. Let's try to keep it simple. Anything in between that level, that's chop. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we don't get some choppy action. We get some directional moves. And, you know, I'm not a bear. You guys know that I'm a sheep. But I am, I am also a chartist. And I like to, you know, I like, it's cool when I see patterns like Evening Star patterns playing out. So I'm not going to lie. I do want to see it play out, you know, because it's cool. You know, and it, I don't know. It's just what I'm into, I guess. Anyways, you guys got my setups. You guys got my levels for the spy. Let's trade this unbiasedly tomorrow. Here's Triple Q. Evening star pattern. Bearish one. This looks even more bearish than the spy. Okay, you guys see this white line here? That is where uh, Triple Q bounced from. If I zoom out, that white line is a critical level. Okay, 375.6. From all-time high down to October 2020, uh, 2022 low. Okay, that's how I have my FIB level. From all-time high down to October 2022 low. That 375.6 level is based on the 78.6 FIB level. That's where we around where we bounce today. Okay, so if you are a bear, that's the critical support level that you want to see Triple Q break down tomorrow. If it does, look to short. And I would target the gap fill at 372.8. That also happens to be a, a FIB level for the smaller structure, okay? That's a short-term FIB level. But yeah, I'll be targeting 372.8 if 375.6 fail as support tomorrow. And below that is 369.5, 367, and 365. Bunch of gaps to the downside. And it can get filled if... Support fails, which is 375.6. All right. What I need to see recapture, if you are a bull, you want to see 379 recapture on triple Q. All right. If 379 recapture on triple Q, definitely look to long. All right. Woo. We had a beautiful trade setup on triple Q. Okay. I have, you know, the fib level at 382. Bears need to break this down to trigger a pullback. Oh, man, did that trade setup work out? Beautiful. All right. And here's IWM. An interesting looking even star pattern. Doesn't look like the traditional even star pattern. I, maybe some would say that's not an even star pattern. Okay. I won't argue with you guys if you guys feel that way. However, based on uh, FIB levels, which I love. One sec. I need to readjust it. For some reason, it changed. Okay. Now we're looking right here. Okay, so yes, 195 is that support level, a FIB level, 1.618 FIB level. If that fails, so we tested today, got a little bit of buying pressure, could be a dead cat bounce because the buying pressure did not lead to a recapture of resistant levels or anything. So it could be a dead cat bounce. So if we break down 195 and 193.8 tomorrow, bearish, look to short, 191.4, 189, and 187 would be in play. For me to change my bearish sentiment, 195 must defend as support, but I still need to see 196.5 recapture, clear as resistant to put 197.6, 198.5, and 200.6 in play. Those are my new levels on IWM. Please add them to your charts now. Whew. Holy moly, Tesla. Holy moly, Tesla. What a beautiful, beautiful one directional move. To the downside, I wrote in Tesla, the Tesla room this morning. I had a bull case and a bear case, okay? Bull case and a bear case, but the bear case played out beautifully. The bull case was only if Tesla was above 284, but I wrote here on the bear case. As long as below 284, bears got a shot at more downside. Breakdown of the next support would be follow through bears need starting with 279.5. Uh, Okay, if it fails, look to short with lower targets in place. So we already knew off the rip, as long as below 284, we was bearish. We was looking for shorting opportunity. 
Holy moly, it did not disappoint. Look at this beautiful move, guys. Okay, remember, I talked to you guys about the reason I was bearish below 279.5. I talked to you guys about the multi-year trend line, the orange multi-year trend line from all-time high. Touch there, touch there, and a touch there. We recently broke it out, and I mentioned if we break back below or gap back below, that's a false breakout setup one of the greatest trade setups of all time and you know earnings is gonna get the credit for it okay because a lot of time with earnings market makers will you know pro uh mark up the prices so that a lot of these big money people could take profits and then boom after earnings they'll dump it okay i don't like to trade earnings but i'll trade after earnings and it worked out beautiful with this false breakout okay so where do we go from here all right 268.5 is a fib level critical fib level from all-time high down to the january 2023 low as long as below 268.5 i am bearish on the tesla okay but that's not first resistant first resistance is at 264 as long as below 264 uh next support is at 261 and 259 if those support levels fail guys we are going down lower lower down to 254 Maybe down uh, even lower down to um, 251 and 248. All right, that's the bearish case scenario. Now above 268.5, bulls may be may be able to get a bounce here to 271, uh, 274, 278, uh, 275.5 to 276 zone first, and then 279.5 to break out the multi-year trend line. They'd have to get back above 284. Okay. You guys got my levels that, you know, um, hopefully I didn't say it too fast. Okay, 263, uh, 264 is first resistant. And 268.5 is my equilibrium level. Above that, bulls may have a chance. All right? But as long as below those levels, watch the breakdown, 261 and 259 to trigger more downside. All right, guys? Apple little red candle today all right but nothing too significant yet keyword is yet got another rejection from the 1.382 fib level at 196 still hovering above that orange trend line of 2023 breakdown level is now at 190.5 let's keep it simple above 190.5 bulls are still in control watch for those false breakdown setups but below 190.5 bears take control finally Put it 188.4, 186.5, and 185 or lower in play. Okay, guys? Microsoft, we had a false breakout setup. We On Tuesday, we was able to clear a FIB level at 357.6. I mentioned if we break back below, that's bearish. We broke back below it the, the next day. Today, we showed, definitely showed some follow through. Okay? So as long as below 357.4, I am bearish on Microsoft because that's where the false breakout setup started. Now, first resistant is a previous pivot high from June 16th, all right? That pivot high is at 351.5, okay? Unless bulls can recapture 351.5, I wouldn't look too long. If it did, I would look too long targeting 355 and then 357.6 again. Above 357.6 is bullish. And we could go back and test 360, 362.5, and maybe even higher to 366s, okay? Now, next support is 344. If 344 fails tomorrow, guys, look to short, all right? Got some bearish momentum building here off that false breakout setup. So if 344 fails tomorrow, that would be follow through and possibly more downside with 342. 340, there's a gap. At 337.3-ish and then 334.5 to 335 zone. Okay, guys? NVDA. Very nice trade uh, trade today. I wrote here on the trade ideas room. Trade ideas room. 464 is first support and 461.6 below. Look to short if these levels fail or long above 466.8. We had to let the price action choose for us. And it broke down 464, gave us a beautiful move down to 450-ish. Holy moly, these are beautiful trade setups. All right, now, from here, 454.5 is support. If that fails, 452.7, uh, 
450.6, all right, 452.7, 450.6, and 449 are next support for NVDA. Below 449 would be very bearish, and we could drop uh, to 445.8. There's a pivot high around 441.5 and also 440. All right, remember, breakdown of support tomorrow, we can continue this bearish momentum. Now, possible double bottom here, but for me to take that double bottom serious, it needs to recapture resistant levels, starting with 458, 459.3, and 464. Loss of 464 is what triggered the sell-off today, so if that recaptures, that would be bullish in my opinion with 468 and 470-ish back in play. Here is Netflix. As you guys can see, I have FIB level from all-time high down to May 2022 low. I have the 50% FIB level at 431.8. Now, if we zoom in to Netflix, that's where we battled as support, okay? The yellow line. So we break down 431.8 tomorrow. That is bearish. We're likely dumping some more. Uh, 426.6 would be my next target with 422, 417, and 415 below that, okay? I have resistant at 438. If that clears, 440, 444.5, 449, and 453.5 would be back in play, okay? Amazon, I had to readjust Based on the recent price action, I had to readjust this channel. This is why I like FIB levels better, guys. Because once you find that right structure to set your FIB levels, it you know the levels don't change. It, it, it's, the level is what it is. But with trend lines, you know when the price action moves around, it changes a little bit. Okay, but overall, it cleared that 134.3ish level yesterday. That was a FIB level, and I mentioned to you guys if it breaks back below it today. That's a false breakout setup. And, then, and of course, that false breakout setup worked out beautifully, dropping as low as 129.3-ish. Did not get the close below 130, though. 130 is the 1.618 FIB level. All right, so bears will need to break down 130 and 128.5. And then we can break down this channel right here, okay? 128.5 below that. Bears take control with 127, 124, and 120 in play okay i will only trust the bounce if we clear resistance starting with 131.5 132.8 ish and then of course 134.3 need to recapture those levels to be bullish guys amd is bearish we gap below the the rising channel okay that's a breakaway gap but it's a bearish version of it or you call it an exhaustion gap whatever makes you feel better but either way it's bearish we broke down this channel. We broke down this FIB level at 112.3. And now we are bouncing at my 109.5-ish level. That's a FIB level. If I zoom out, all-time high. I got it from all-time high down to October 2022 low. All right? That FIB level is at 109.5. And that's where we bounce today. If bulls want to turn this around, they need to recapture 112.3 tomorrow. We already tested support. And the recapture 112.3, look to long, play level to level style, guys, but look to long with one, uh, with the gap fill at 116.5-ish in play, all right? Now, as long as below 112.3, look for the breakdown of 109.5. If that breaks down, that's bearish with 107.5 and 105.7 in play play all right guys now let's look at the dark pool 455.22 is the dark pool level today 1.6 billion in premium there okay a few cents away from my 454 uh, excuse me 455 level right add that to your chart as long as we're below that level based on the dark pool level it is bearish if that level recaptures then we are bullish all right uh, spy option flow Filter for 500k premiums are above, and we'll look at the expiration date one month out, and it's bullish for the short term. Triple Q is bearish for the short term. IWM, nothing for the short term. Tesla is bearish for the short term, and for good reason. 
Apple. Is it bearish? Yes, Apple's bearish for the short term. Uh, what am I missing? NVDA bullish for the short term. And uh, hmm. Netflix bearish for the short term. VIX bullish for the short term. Oh, interesting. Uh, what, am I missing anything, guys? AMD bullish for the short term. Google, is it Google? Is it Google? All right, Google. Bullish for the short term for Google. Before I go, let me do it. Analysis on Google. Goog. Goog. G double O G. Looking bearish there. Google. Got support at 119. If 119 fails, 117.7 and 115.8 is in play. Below 115.8, we're going to a lower low. Maybe go fill the gap at 112. All right. Resistance is at 122. No, excuse me. Resistance at 121 based on the Fib level. Above 121, look to long. If 122.6, 124.3, and 126.6 in play. That's your Google analysis. And Uncle is going to end the video right here. Thank you guys so much for your time. Have a great evening. Uncle is out.